Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating and interpreting the uncertainty coefficient using SPSS. The uncertainty coefficient, also known as the entropy coefficient, is used as a measure of association between two nominal variables. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data editor in SPSS, I have one variable here named employment, and this is a dichotomous variable, it's a 0 or a 1, and the two levels are employed and not employed. And then I have a second variable, group, and this variable is also nominal except it has three levels, uh, morning, evening, and afternoon, so 0, 1, or 2. Let's assume that these data were gathered from a mental health agency and you have clients coming into the agency and they are selecting a group time, a morning group, an afternoon group, or an evening group. And because it is necessary to plan these groups in advance, you want to know if there's some way to predict what group time clients will select. And among the data that you have available to you is this employment status variable. So you know whether a client is employed or not employed. And you're hoping that that can help you predict what group they'll select. The uncertainty coefficient can be used when you are hypothesizing that one variable is an independent variable and the other is a dependent variable. In this case, we would hypothesize that employment is the independent variable because we believe that it has an impact on what group they select. So group is our dependent variable. So to calculate the uncertainty coefficient, we'll go to Analyze, then Descriptive Statistics, and then Cross Tabs. And employment is the variable that we're treating as the independent variable. I'm going to move that into the row list box. And group is the variable I'm treating as the dependent variable. So I'm going to move that to the column list box. Under statistics, you can see under nominal, and we are dealing with nominal variables in the situation, we want to select the uncertainty coefficient. And I'm also going to select lambda to present a comparison here. So we have uncertainty coefficient and lambda, both of those checked off. Nothing else needs to be checked off. Click continue and then click OK. So up top here in the case processing summary we can see that we have 90 cases, no missing values. And then in the employment status times group counseling cross tabulation, employment status, we have here in rows, employed, not employed, and then in the column, the three levels of group counseling, the morning, afternoon, and evening times for the group counseling sessions. So just by taking a look at the cross tabulation, we can see in the employed level, the independent variable, not many clients selected morning or afternoon, and quite a few selected evening. For the not employed, the counts were more spread out. Uh, 12 selected morning, 20 in the afternoon, and 13 selected an evening group counseling session. So even before we get to interpreting the, st the statistic, the uncertainty coefficient, we can tell that there probably is some sort of value in knowing the employment status because of this large count for employed and evening. 40 out of 45 selected that. So then moving down to directional measures, we can see the last statistic reported is the uncertainty coefficient. SPSS has output here symmetric, so this does not consider uh, one variable as the independent variable and another as the dependent. And then you have two that are asymmetric, uh, employment status as the dependent and group counseling as a dependent. We know in this situation we want to consider group counseling as the dependent variable, so we would interpret 
this value here, 0.217. So to interpret this value, it's important to understand that the uncertainty coefficient, just like lambda and the Goodman and Kruskal tau, is what's referred to as a PRE interpretation measure, proportional reduction in error. So if we have a value here for the uncertainty coefficient of 0.217, we first convert that into a percent, 21.7 percent, and then we can say that having this employment status variable available reduces the probability that we'll make a prediction error on the dependent variable by 21.7 percent. Or put another way, having access to the employment status variable improves our probability of predicting the correct group counseling level by 21.7 percent. Now you can see that lambda, when using the lambda value for group counseling, it has a smaller value, 18.9 percent, and the Goodman and Kruskal tau in this situation for these data has a larger value, 0.247. These statistics are interpreted the same way. It's a PRE interpretation, proportional reduction error. But the way that three, these three statistics calculate the value is different. Lambda places an emphasis for comparisons on the mode. The Goodman and Kruskal tau places an emphasis on marginal totals. And the uncertainty coefficient uses the entire distribution of data, all of the data, to draw comparisons. You may select the statistic based on what it emphasizes when making the comparisons, or you may select the most conservative or least conservative value. So in this case, the most conservative value is actually the lambda value, 18.9 percent, and the least conservative is the Good Goodman and Kruskal tau. Again, that's just as applied to this particular data set. So it would appear in this situation that since the range is roughly 19 percent to 25 percent, the uncertainty coefficient being about 22 percent, and the variable employment status a variable that you would already collect and most likely already use, you can reduce your prediction error by about 20 percent by collecting and using the employment status. I hope you found this video on calculating and interpreting the uncertainty coefficient using SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.